Uh, so this is Dr. Flores. I'm supposed to do Jovita Aguilar today in the teaching. I see where we got six people here. That's really good with me here. So I guess I can talk talking. I was going to wait five minutes. It's 3.05. So um, I guess, for, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you all see me in the corner over there somewhere? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So Barbara, what do I do? I do I just go ahead and start, or just wait? Or? Well, we'll go ahead and we'll wait a few minutes, let people jump on, and then I'll introduce you. So. Okay, this sounds wonderful. Okay, sounds great. wonderful. I think it's going to work. Knock on wood. Yeah, that's great. So, thank you. Let me turn on my phone. Because it will ring and make noises. All right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit our, actually, okay. I, already record, I already hit record, so we got that. All right, so okay. thank you all for joining us this afternoon for the next talk in the Arts and Sciences and Women's Gender Studies Teaching Series. Today we have uh, Dr. Manuel Flores, and he's going to tell us all about Jovita Idar, and as a, a fascinating long title that I'm going to butcher, so let me... <laughs> I'm gonna switch on over because it was so long I didn't type it in the in the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead without further ado and pass the mic on over to Dr. Flores. Okay. Well, thanks for being here, all of you. Uh, thanks for li listening to this lecture about Jovita Idar, one of my heroes, one of my journalism heroes, and also one of my activist heroes. Uh, she has such a fascinating story. I don't know how this woman has not been talked about more in, in the past. I don't know why she isn't a part of Texas history or women's history. Uh, this woman deserves, a, oh my goodness, she deserves some type of monument, some type of scholarship name for her. There's never been another woman like her in Texas, and maybe in the nation there have been, but there's never been another woman like her. She is in the Texas Women's Hall of Fame and she's in the National Women's Hall of Fame as well. She was a feminist. She was a political activist. She was a brilliant newspaper reporter and publisher and editor. 
She was a fighter. She fought for civil rights. She was unladylike because women just didn't do the stuff she did back then in the early 20th century. She was a loving daughter and her father made such an impact on her life and he and she on his as well that uh, they were able to become one of the, the leading families of Texas, living right here in South Texas in Laredo to be exact. So we're going to talk about Jovita Idar, and I'm going to try to keep an eye on, on, on the balloons, I guess. If anybody has a question, uh, you can feel free to say something, okay? So Jovita Idar. Jovita came from a newspaper family. When I say that, uh, I mean that her father, Nicasio, which is the man in the middle, and her brother, Ida Eduardo, and other, six other children all work for her father's newspapers or for Eduardo's newspapers or for Jovita's newspapers. That's her in the middle when she had her own newspaper. And this is significant because there were very few. I want to go back one slide. There were very few women women in the state and in the nation who actually had their own newspaper and published it and ran it. Uh, running a newspaper back then was, was very different than today. You had to get gritty and dirty to be able to produce it. So in her early life, she was one of eight children, and that's her at Holding Institute in Laredo, where she got her teacher certificate and learned a lot about journalism and grammar and all that. She was born September 7, 1885 in Laredo, and she died June 15, 1946 in San Antonio. She died from tuberculosis. She was originally a teacher in Los Ojuelos near Laredo and at Holding Institute in 1903. Holding was her alma mater. She pursued journalism to tackle social issues such as discrimination, and she wrote primarily at the first for La Cronica, her father's newspaper, to shed light on discrimination towards Hispanics, lynching, and oppression of Hispanic culture and use of the Spanish language. Jovita Idar was a brilliant young woman. Like I said, she was a publisher herself, and it's important to note that, that she founded and ran her own newspaper, something that was very unique in America. She was bilingual and her newspaper was written primarily in Spanish with articles in English for those who could not read Spanish. It was in Laredo, Texas. Originally a teacher in Los Ojuelos and at Holden Institute, Holden was her alma mater. Uh, she wanted to go into teaching to help the young Hispanic, the young Mexicano at the time, the young Tejano, to be able to get a good education and move on to, to college as she did. But of course, she was disappointed the way things happened. She she went to she went to teach in Los Ojuelos, which is a ranch in South Texas, and she found out they had no books. She found out that uh, whatever they had was outdated, even back then in the 20th century. Can you imagine? And so, what did she do? She used her printing and publishing skills to print a book to help her students, and she printed something called La Luz. Revista de Instrucción Primaria, a book to help people learn in the primary grades. And that's what she used as her book. As you can see, this young woman was not going to be deterred by anything. She was going to get her job done one way or the other. In Los Ojuelos, she noticed a lack of material for her students and was, in typical Jovita fashion, furious. Los Ojuelos is in a private property and is still a working ranch. The ranch was established in 1878. It's got a Texas historical marker. She said that Mexican children in Texas needed an education. There is no other means to do it but ourselves so that we are not devalued and belittled is what she said. She wrote it in her newspaper. Idad is frustrated with the other for her Hispanic students, so she takes action into her own hands. At the Holden Institute, her students were lacking in culture, resources, and hope. Carrots and desks and even pencils were scarce. Ida realized that she could publish her, 
that, that she could publish her take on the social climate and reach an audience through the press. She began writing about discrimination of Hispanics through cinematic films and how the perception of Hispanics heavily impacted society. Let me talk about that just a little while. When this was going on in the early 20th century, there was a genre of film called greaser films. The greaser films are not the greasers that we think about now with slick hair and stuff like that and riding motorcycles. They were movies about Mexican Americans depicted in a very bad way. She got very angry at this and some of her first work as a newspaper woman, as a reporter and an editor and a publisher later was to attack Hollywood. She attacked Hollywood for the depiction of the way they depicted Mexican Americans, Blacks, and Native Americans. She went all the way to Washington to tell them to stop this movie industry from having these types of movies. Of course, they went on. But the point is not that they didn't change it. The point is she had the courage as a young woman of 20 and 20, 21, 22 to go to Washington and press Hollywood and what it was doing back then. She is also credited with organizing women to actively speak and participate in the first Mexican Congress. She is recognized as one of the first fresh feminists that fought for women's suffrage as well. You can see she's done a lot of things. She said that working women know their rights and probably rise to the face of the struggle. The hour of the degradation is past. Women are no longer servants, but rather the focus of the future. I don't even see women talking like that today. In 1916, Jovita and her brother Eduardo created Evolución, another newspaper. Edward later joined El Progreso after returning from Mexico where she aided La Cruz Blanca. So she worked as a volunteer for the Red Cross in Mexico. In an editorial opinion piece, Edward challenged the need for Texas Rangers to be dispersed along the border. The Rangers have we intimidated that and shut down the paper and shut down her paper, but that didn't stop, stop her. So this is an introduction to her. Now we're going to get into the, her life. Jovita Yidar is so famous that she has her own historical marker, not the place where she was born, but somewhere in Laredo they decided to put it, the Jovita Yidar historical marker close to where his news, newspaper was. She believed that her paper was the voice of the Hispano-Americano. Her headline was Hispanos Losing Land. Yeah, um, during the reconquest, a lot of land was lost. Jovita was a suffragist. Texas Highways Magazine called her one of the game changers in the feminist movement in Texas. Through her writing and community work was one of the state's leading advocates for women's voting rights. And then the latest issue of Texas Highways Magazine called her a game changer for women's rights in Texas, in particular Mexican American women. Here's what the Texas Highways said about her. Jovita Edad was an activist for women's and Mexican American rights in the early 20th century. As a journalist for Laredo newspapers, she supported women's suffrage and urged women to participate in public sphere. In 1911, she and her family coordinated a conference for Mexican Americans organized to work for their civil liberties. That same year, Edad founded La Liga Femenil Mexicanista, a feminist organization that focused on women's rights and children's education. So as you can see, she's not only a, a reporter and publisher, she is a feminist and a suffragist as well. She wrote for women unheard of in that area. She wore, wrote for the woman because women were not supposed to read newspapers not in South Texas. They were supposed to read magazines. Newspapers were man's business. That's the way things were done. And the article here is La, La Mujer Mexicana de Ambos Laredo, asking the people, the women from both from both cities to come together with a suffragist movement. And, and also just to write directly to women, uh, many of who could not read English or Spanish, but people got to read the newspaper together. And she had a big impact on women. She founded La Liga Femenil Mexicanista. Okay. It advocated civil rights for women and rallied for the education of children. This is what she wrote about it. This is the article she wrote, it's, it's right there. And she says, to be able to write this news article, 
The reporter wishes to have words that were like music and sublime thoughts full of expression and sub sublime poetry. So she was very excited that group formed. Now, granted, there were no women's service clubs or any type besides besides Sewing and Kevin T and stuff like that. This was a political a political club that she formed so that the women could get together and make a change in their own lives and the lives of other people in her hometown of Laredo. It was a game changer, a total game changer for women. She lived in treacherous times with the Ku Klux Klan trying to spread into Texas, including the Rio Grande Valley, the Coastal Bank, Kingsville, Corpus Christi, and she rallied against all racists. The Ku Klux Klan had rallies from Dallas all the way to Brownsville, not to mention Kingsville, Corpus Christi, Rockport, all of these areas. And wherever the Ku Klux Klan were, they knew that Jovita Hidalgo was going to write something bad about them. In Texas, it was the Texas Rangers. Los Rinches Malditos who terrorized the Mexican-American population. It was a very hard time to be a Mexican-American, even in South Texas, which is ridiculous, by the way. Lynchings were coming at that time. Ovita was particularly upset with the lynchings of innocent Mexican-American, Tejano citizens of the United States in the border region. She was particularly upset with the lynching in Thorndale, Texas. She blamed the Texas Rangers for doing their job of protecting an American citizen, a young boy. Ovita wrote eloquently in her newspaper and asked us for authorities to, to act against the Rangers, act against the Rangers. And here is the story that it was in her paper, Death of Boy, Circumstances of Torn Daryl Lynching, Explained by Judge. And actually was extremely angry and she got a lot of, a lot of criticism because she wrote this article asking the authorities to, to close the Rangers, to, to make, move the Rangers out of Texas. La Cronica, the Spanish language newspaper in Laredo, owned by the family, published Jovita's article that condemned the lynching death of Antonio Gomez, an act of cowardice. The young boy's name was Antonio. The story received nationwide publicity. Jovita's article widely separated, circulated, and this is a, a book on the Thorndale lynching of 1911, and there's pictures of the young boy being lynched. The paper was a source of news and activism for Mexican-American rights. This is a Hidar family paper. She often wrote articles speaking about racism and supporting the revolution in Mexico. In 1911, Hidar and her family organized the first Mexican Congress to unify Mexicans across the border to fight injustice. The Congress discussed many issues, including education and lack of economic resources. On September 14, 1911, she went a step further. El Primer Congreso Mexicanista, the first Mexican Congress in Laredo, in order to discuss social, labor, educational, economic issues facing Mexicans and Mexican Americans in the United States. At the meeting, Jovita Edad was elected president of the Women's League of El Congreso. So she, she made sure that the women of South Texas were involved in this political organization. Through our suggestion, women participated as speakers and participants. This was unheard of back then. For some, it was the first political meeting. This Congress has been called the first attempt in Mexican American history to organize a militant feminist social movement. The New York had published a pro woman suffrage piece in La Cronica. She was very attuned to what was going on throughout the rest of the country. Remember, she had been in Washington protesting the movies from Hollywood at the time. Forming the Primer Congreso Mexicanista de Texas was a game changer. All over South Texas, Tejanos in every small city and ranch town realized they had to organize that they expected to survive as American citizens. In many ways, this was the predecessor to American GI Forum and the League of United Latin American Citizens. After this was done, other, other organizations started to form. 
the Edad family papers proudly boasted that a dream had come to reality with an organization that included both men and women. Por fin se realiza el ideal de los, de los buenos mexicanos tejanos. Finally, the dream of the good Mexican American and Tex Mexican Texans has been realized by the forming of a political club that included both men and women. That never been done. And it hasn't been done since. Funny how that works. In 1913, traveled to Mexico to work as a nurse for the revolutionary forces against the federal government of Mexico. As a nurse, she tended to the wounded and helped them heal so that they could go back to the fighting for their freedom. While she was not a soldadera, uh, Mexico during the revolution had a lot of soldaderas, women, soldiers. She was in the thick of the battle. In Mexico, she was part of La Cruz Blanca, who helped with the wounded and sick. She was a devoted nurse. La Cruz Blanca was founded by her friend in Laredo, went nationwide in Mexico. It was like the Red Cross here in, here in the United States. But she had stories to tell, and her love for journalism sent her back to Laredo to write about her people, the Tejano, the Mexico-Americano. She returned to Laredo and wrote for El Progreso, her father's, her father's newspaper. It was with that paper that she insulted President Woodrow Wilson for sending American troops to the border. Down in Texas, they were told to do something about that crazy woman down in Laredo. Shut down her newspaper. The Texas Rangers would come calling. That's President Wilson, and this is an, an ad that, that ran in East Coast newspapers asking for men to volunteer to go to the border and watch and keep watch on the Rio Grande. Angering President Woodrow Wilson. Jovita being Jovita did not want U.S. federal troops in the border region. Kind of like what happened in Washington, do not have federal troops do things that are not, that are not they're not supposed to do. She felt that it was the state's and local municipalities' duty to protect us. So she wrote an editorial. Wilson called Texas. Jovita said, aquí estoy, come visit me. President Wilson, I'll talk to you as to why. This is the cartoon. That's the Texas Rangers. That's the newspaper of Progreso. That's her confronting the Texas Rangers. More about this in a while. When the Rangers arrived to close down El Progreso, Idar stood in the doorway to keep him from entering. The Rangers closed the newspaper the next day. They tore up all of her printing presses. They tore up all of her, all of, her, of the equipment she had. She had just told him, you can't come in here because it's against the law, the First Amendment. And of course, they returned the next day and all the printers and all the type were smashed to pieces. She wasn't there. It happened at night. It was a nighttime raid. Not by vigilantes, by the Texas Rangers. This is a documented fact. However, unperturbed, Jovita went to Brownsville back then in a car, one of the first cars ever, ever to be in Laredo, where her brother Eduardo had a newspaper and printing office. She was back in Laredo with a new issue of El Progreso and a new editorial condemning the Rangers and kind of saying, I get the last laugh. After this incident, she went back to La Cronica and soon started running the newspaper when her father passed away in 1940. Her father's motto and goal had been realized. She had followed this tradition of being a newspaper woman and publisher. The goal of the Yedad family was Trabajamos por el progreso y el desarrollo industrial e intelectual de los habitantes mexicanos de Texas. We work for the progress and growth, industrial growth and moral and intellectual growth of the inhabitants of Texas, Mexico. That's like saying Tejanos, okay? A few years later, Idar married Bartolo Juarez and moved to San Antonio, Texas. 
She became active in the Democratic Party in Texas and promoted equal rights for women. She also became an editor of a publication for the Methodist Church called El Heraldo Cristiano, the Christian Hero. Idar remained committed to her community by volunteering in the hospital as an interpreter for Spanish-speaking patients and started a free kindergarten for children. To still was, was, was worried about, about education of the Hispanic. Her favorite saying was, when you educate a woman, you educate a family. Ovita Idar died in San Antonio, Texas in 1946. She was an American journalist, a political activist, a civil rights worker, an education reformer, a teacher, a suffragist, and most of all, she was unafraid. She was unafraid about anything. She fought for civil rights and she would do what it took in order for the right thing to happen. If the Texas Rangers didn't like her, we did. She called for the dis dissolution of the Texas Rangers. She didn't want any more Texas Rangers in Texas. She was the first one to do this in Texas. And later on, Governor Jim Hogg, at the insistence of another state legislature, actually almost did away with the Texas Rangers. So that's a, a little presentation on Jovita Idar, a woman that everybody should be familiar with, at least in Texas, a woman that should be respected and honored as a pioneer, as a pioneer as a journalist, as a pioneer as a civil rights leader, as a pioneer as an education reformer, as a pioneer as a political activist. And all of us in Texas should be aware that she was here in the Lone Star State and made an impact during her young life. Are there any questions? And I'm glad to see so many of you here, 14. That's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much. If, if you have a question, um, you can put it in the chat, or I've made it so that you should be able to unmute yourself if you just want to ask it. It's okay. I can talk some more about her. You know <coughs> Are there information on the data of the South Texas Archives? Very little. Most of this is in the is in the um, University of Texas Archives and in the Texas Historical Society um, Archive Room in Austin. That's a good question. Have any movies or movies, novels been written about it? There has never been a novel written about Jovita Idar. However, there is a PBS uh, documentary um, about strong women, and there's about a 12-minute portion in there. Some of the information here and the, the, the pictures that I use, some of the pictures I use come from the PBS documentary. Are there any activist movements still today? Well, uh, the Me Too movement is very similar to what Jovita Idar tried to do back in 1913, 1914, 1915. It, it, it was actually getting the women involved, involved with politics, which never has been done and has never been done properly. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I would say, did a lot of that with her uh, not organization for women and also her, her fight in the, in, the, in the Supreme Court, and of course as a Supreme Court justice. Any plays? No. What a wonderful idea. We should make a play. Wow. The PPS document, by the way, is very good. Very good. Uh, my, the reason I did this, and I, I get too excited sometimes, and so I kind of stumble. The reason I did this is because I, I cannot believe how few people know about Hobi Taylor. And I cannot believe that the history books in Texas, in particular for our high school students and for our college
college students hardly mention her. And if they do mention her, it's a mention her, it's a cursory thing saying that she was the daughter of her father, Nikas, who was a great journalist himself. But no, this was a young woman with a heart and soul made of fire and brimstone, and nothing was going to get in her way. I mean, she was in the middle of the Mexican Revolution. She confronted the Texas Rangers. After the hanging in Thorndale, Texas, she went, got on her horseback and went all the way to Thorndale to, to cross out the people who, hung, who lynched this boy. She, she was not afraid. We need more women like that. Although the Mexican men, he said, well, maybe not. No. <laughs> no, we do. We need more people. Like that. Well, I, I, I think can't believe there haven't been any movies or plays. It's just, it's, it, I mean, she's right up there with. Yeah. Well, there, there, there are. She has chapters in a book, but never, I never yeah. a book about her. She has chapters in the book. Anything else? Want me to talk some more? No, Flores, it did not. I have a question. I had to take a phone call, and you might have said this already, but did she have children? No. She was too busy doing things. <laughs> well, you can you can do both. I just wondered if, <laughs> if she had, I just wondered if she had any if she had any children like that might That's still be around. You know, That's I didn't great. know. A great question, but she she has lots of uh, nieces and nephews that are still that are nieces still nieces and nephews, yeah, for sure. She was one of eight children, and okay. most of most of them were brothers. I mean, except for her, <laughs> so she was Jovita. And the majority of them went into newspapering uh, and education as well. Uh, her brother Eduardo Idar, that, that she went to Brownsville to publish her newspaper after the Texas Rangers ransacked. Her newspaper was the, was one of the founders of LULAG, the League of United Latin American Citizens, and he took uh, direction from her, who helped find the Liga Feminista in 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 the border cities. Eduardo Idar wrote the constitution for for LULAG. I know that sounds like it's not important, but it is. The League of United Latin American Citizens grew up to become the biggest civil rights organization in in the nation, next to the NAACP. It was a very important stuff, and he got the direction on how to do this after seeing her, his sister go out and actually do it for women. Uh, unfortunately, there's not that many, not that many women organizations anymore like this. But a lot of it, the suffragist movement was right here in South Texas, and it spread to the little ranch towns and to cities like Alice, and also all the way to Corpus as well, and down here in South. Texas. It, it she made a difference in the lives of South Texas. And she went all the way to Washington to protest what she thought was unjust movies. The, 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 yeah, unjust movies portraying Mexican Americans wrong. Okay. Well, if there being no other questions, I'd like to thank you for listening to me. Thank you for giving this opportunity for this, spread the word about Jovita Yadar. And I wish you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and day, whatever's left up here. So thank you very much for listening. And thank you so very much for this amazing presentation about a phenomenal woman. Thank you so much. So it's a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And I want to take a moment to um, to share our next teach and talk, which is actually my talk. Um, tomorrow at noon will be, uh, what does it mean to defund the police? Unpacking the abolition movements in criminal justice. So um, you are welcome. To, again, you can find the links on the Arts and Sciences website. Um, you can scan that code. I just wanted to take a minute to promote our next one. And then the following, uh, the following one won't be until next week, I believe. So, all right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.